Today we've deployed our first 1.362 update for Walker 3 Reforged. This patch will feature tournament changes, map will updates and balance adjustments. Please note that the test version is a work in progress and is subject to change. Thank you very much for your testing and feedback. General, we've updated our backend server infrastructure to improve the server frame rate. Hopefully all wins count now. Hopefully this just adds to more stability. This is always a good thing. And this also goes beyond balance changes. Because a balance change is basically updating an Excel sheet. It's not much work, usually. This goes deeper. And this is much appreciated. Balance! Balance! Let's go! It is not the biggest update. But it's some crazy stuff in there. Human! Polymorph can now target heroes. Currently, that's only possible for units. It is a three second duration, which is weaker than a level one hex, which is four seconds. Sundering Blades, the upgrade for knights that gives them extra damage to medium armor, does now require an upgrade again. This is was like the update upgrade was introduced. Back in the 2020s, and then at one point they gave it to him for free. And now they dial it back again, so it does require some research, research time and resources. Orcs! Tauren are now available at tier 2, with the pulverize upgrade still required tier 3. Okay. Night Elf, the Priestess of the Moon Searing Arrows, mana cost reduced from 8 to 5. Also, the damage has been increased from 10, 20, 30 to 10, 25, 40. Mountain Giant food cost reduction from 7 to 6. Vorpal Blades upgrade for the Glaive Throwers reduced from 60 to 45 seconds. Undead, we've got a hype train going on, thank you very much. Undead, Ghoul Frenzy Attack Speed Bonus, reduced from 35 to 30. This is the tier 3 Ghoul upgrade that everybody knows. Curse and Cripple can now target mechanical units. Scroll of Healing removed from the Tome of Relics. Wand of Negation added to the Tome of Relics at tier 2. This is basically a dispel item for an AoE Dispel, 3 charges, 200 gold, with 200 damage to summons. Meatwagon speed increased from 220 to 240. And the Frostworm Freezing Breath Lumber cost reduced from 275 to 225. Neutrals, Firelord Volcano does less damage against building. The damage factor has been reduced from 3 to 2. And the Naga Sea Witch Tornado speed, base and minimum speed, increased from 75 to 150. Does that make Tornado twice as fast? There's other changes as well. We're updating the tournament schedule to have more 1 on 1 and 2 on 2 during the week and 3 and 3 and 4 on 4 and removing 4 on 4 from the tournament pool. Alright. Map pool changes. Tide Hunters in, springtime out. This is once again not uh, that important for us here. Uh, but there are changes to the map pool, which is an important thing, especially if you do them only twice a year, keeping the map pools fresh. So. First impression. I'm dropping frames like crazy. Cool. I hope this stabilizes. No? All right. Then I guess I got to restart real quick. Stream is fine. Stream is fine. Everything fine. What the hell? That's really odd. Fine. Okay. Okay, cool. Then we stay on. Thank you very much, Metzka, for the sub. And Toby, alias Spike Spiegel. And Lemez. Thank you guys for the subs. 
So. What does this tell me? This tells me that they want they want some drastical changes. It's not enough for them. Whoever they are, we still don't know. It's not enough for them to just adjust tiny things to bring everything that we have right now in line. They want some shakeups. And I think this is the right thing to do. I think if we do a minimal patch that makes things fairer, things will get boring very quickly again. Because most of the builds are already figured out. So bringing something crazy in, especially when the next patch is coming in six months, if there's a next patch. I appreciate craziness. I really do. And I think there's some crazy stuff in there. And we have three iterations to dial the craziness back. And add some other stuff. So, my thoughts. My initial thoughts. Um, I would say... So... Let's put this in three different categories, if we can. Will this make the game more fun? Will this make the game more fair? And do they know what they're doing? That would be three categories for me. Human. Polymorph can now target heroes. Three second duration. I think... Polymorph or Sorceress Master Training is one of the fewest played things we see in the entire human race. Everything else is played. Maybe Dragonhawk Cloud. Maybe Dragonhawk Cloud um, is less played. Or even same. So they know that this is underplayed and they want to change that. Which is in general a very good thing. A hero disable in the late game at an already strong late game is in my opinion not the right way. I could certainly see some fun interactions here. It is still a very expensive spell. So like 200 mana I think. So you will probably not spam it on everything. But you don't have to, right? Like, only some key targets. I feel like Blizzard is doing... This is probably, in general, a very bad idea to make that change. If they are determined to do this, they probably make an old Blizzard mistake again to make something a lot stronger while not addressing other things. For example, make the upgrade more expensive, make the upgrade take longer, make the spell more expensive in mana. Clearly visible. It's been this way since the Matt Morris days, always been that way. Um, if you do crazy changes to this, you should probably also make it more expensive. In general, I think this is a very bad idea. To give human another disable or another crowd control. It's something they don't really need, I think. I think Polymorph is already incredibly strong. Accessibility might be an issue, cost might be an issue, but Polymorph itself is pretty good. Sundering Blades now requires an upgrade again. This is tackling the strength of human tier 3. Does it really though? Because all this does, it's not that it lowers the power level of human at tier 3. 
it just delays the power level. Because the strength stays the same. The Sundering Blades itself are not getting nerfed. N nothing before that is getting nerfed. So reaching tier 3 is still as easy as it was if you only look at the race and not the factors, the buffs and nerfs to the other races. So while I think knights in itself are crazy good, I don't think this fixes the problem of an of a very, very, even in comparison, strong human tier 3. In general, though, it's nice. I still don't know if knights need this upgrade. But maybe it's also an interaction with what we've seen, uh, or what we'll be see at the knight outside. Torrin available at tier 2. Torrin always a problem throughout the history of Warcraft 3 that they are not playable in one-on-one. -on -one. I only talk about one-on-one -on -one because that's the primary game mode. Torrin are a super cool and fun unit that we would love to see more of. They are a signature unit of Orc. Pulverize is super fun. It's super fun to see them tear through an army. They are very expensive though, and at the tier 3 stage, relatively easy to counter. This makes it so that orcs don't get a tier 3 unit at all. <laughs> and with that, it's the only race that doesn't get a tier 3 unit, only gets upgrades. Kodo, Wyvern, Tauren, plus of course everything that unlocks at the shop. Um... Berserkers, of course. So I guess, no, nah, not the Berserkers. It's a modification, so. I think... Will Torrin be too strong at tier 2? There's, I, I guess there's two ways to do this. It is in... There's still Dryads that can, kite, that can make them slow, even slower. There's still slow that will crowd control them. Undeads will probably have a harder time. Because they don't have crowd control really, except Nova. <laughs> this could be pretty crazy versus ghouls. <laughs> and breakers, of course. So I wonder if you have to do something here. If you have to weaker the Tauren and give it back at tier 3. Um... That could be fun. Or if Torrin at this stage are too strong, has to be observed. I... I can see... That... I mean, giving more options to Orc will definitely make the race more fun. Clearly. Once again, they do know what they want to achieve by making them more accessible. And also, I think... Pretty much all races, human probably the least, Night Elf and Orc for sure, suffer from Frenzy Ghouls. And Torrent could be pretty sick against Frenzy Ghouls. So, I guess I see what they try to do here. Um, it could also be really cool against Mass Breakers, because Mass Breakers are pretty boring in this matchup. That could also fix that. I feel like this is a solid direction and needs some tweaking. Some number tweaking, maybe damage built into pull, like take damage away and add it to pulverize or something to give Torn a stronger tier 3 version, not only of the pulverizer but of the unit itself. But Torrin at tier 2 could fix some issues. That exists in the game right now. It is a bit of flawed game design when the race doesn't get something cool to play with on tier 3, to be honest. That kind of sucks. 
Night Elf. Potem. Once again, a hero that is not played is getting addressed for that thumbs up. Searing Arrow. Mana cost reduced from 8 to 5. And damage increased from level 2 up. So this will probably only be noticeable... When? From level 4 on? And then you have an orb. I think this doesn't fix anything. Once again, they realize that Potom is underplayed, but the pro problem of the Potom is not the Searing Arrow, it's the entire design of the Potom. Because there's no effect to the Searing Arrow, which makes it boring. It's only... Like, it's two claws. That's it. It's only it's two claws per shot for a little mana. Um, and later, you have an orb. And she's a great orb carry. So she doesn't need the damage boost because you go orb anyway because orb of venom is insane. So this doesn't fix the problem. I like that they learned, apparently, and don't touch... The tier 1. This is a mistake that Blizzard patches did a lot in the past. To If they want to buff an ability, buff it across the board and not only later on, etc. So I think this, will this won't change anything and you have to tackle Potom differently. It's a boring hero with a boring design that could be so cool, but probably not fixable with just Excel sheet um, changes. You have to revamp the entire mechanic of a spell, I think. Mountain Giant food cost reduced from 7 to 6. We've been there before. And we've seen that before. And I saw some people already worry that we see mass mountain giants again, but... Brothers and sisters, everyone in between, don't you worry. Back when mountain giants had six food, they also had double taunt. And I think the bigger problem with mountain giants was the double taunt and not the supply. I don't think this is an issue. I don't think it's a crazy change. Will this help a lot? So knights get weaker against medium armor and mountain giants are becoming more affordable. This is clearly a dynamic, right? This is clearly something that goes hand in hand. But the thing is for mountain giants, you also like, for knights, you need to build a knight and then research Thundering Blades. Doesn't take that much time. Mountain Giants, you can build earlier, but you need the two upgrades with Hardened Skin and Resistant Skin. So this timing should even out. And then this timing with the Thundering Blades, once again, doesn't really do much. This could make the army composition... Better, for sure. Could squeeze in... an archer more. If you go... Mountain Giants Mass Archers. Because you want like two Mountain Giants, right? One is not really enough. You always go two at the same time. Or Fairy. This is streamlining, I think. Which shouldn't... be risky. I don't hate it, um, but it won't really change the dynamic between knights and mountain giants because Thundering Blades is still there. Vorpal Blades research time reduced. I'm actually... I know very little about Vorpal Blades. Once again, this looks like something from the Matt Morris era where glaive throwers were overpowered but glaive like warpal blades was an entire different upgrade back then um i kind of don't have an opinion on it does it do much this will certainly help i don't hate it i think i don't hate it 
it's, I guess, probably a bit disappointing for elves. It's nothing fancy, but it's also nothing groundbreaking. And they also don't get their moon juice back. <laughs> Undead! I think Undead is by far the most interesting in this entire patch log. Everybody... And I include myself. For a long time, and you know it. Everybody that watches my cast knows it. Complains about Ghoul Frenzy, and Ghoul Frenzy is getting tackled by reducing the attack speed bonus from 35 to 30. As always, we have to see this hand in hand with maybe Torren at tier 2 against Ghouls, and also... Well, Knights, not really. But definitely with the Torren. Will this change anything? So, first of all, is it the right... Like, they realize that Frenzy is an issue, and that is amazing, because Frenzy has to be nerfed. 100% Frenzy ruins several matchups, and Frenzy needs to be nerfed no matter what. Is it the right thing? The attack speed bonus, this is very minimal. This is very minimal. It's only the attack speed bonus. And you know what? The attack speed bonus only comes into effect after the first attack. So it doesn't change the speed of the first attack only from attack 1 to 2 upwards if you're not counting. So I think this is a case of issue somewhat identified. And to me, this looks like a call to help. Like, community, Neo, Dondo, Grubby, whoever, what shall we do? I think it's probably solid to do that in general. I would also love to see the attack upgrade take, or the frenzy upgrade take longer to shift the timing further to the back. To give especially Night Elves more time. And I guess movement speed could be addressed. Um, I think this this by far doesn't go far enough. Then there might also be the question though. What do you do against Orc? How do you deal with Tauren? With Ghouls? Against Pulverize? Hmm. With Fiends? Against Pulverize? Hmm. This has a huge danger of being too strong if Torrent are implemented the way they are right now. And not made weaker at tier 2. Curse and Cripple can now target mechanical units. Rip tanks. Rip tanks. And maybe rip gyros? I don't know if you can apply that much curse, but this is essential. This is 1000% against tanks. Against gyros, there's so many gyros. You can get some damage mitigation, but I think at the end it won't matter, especially with cripple. It's only with curse. And I don't think cripple will matter that much. Because it's a master upgrade and it takes forever. Once it's out though, insane debuff. And then it might be an incentive to go for that. Because cripple is also good against knights and griffins. And then it could be good against tanks. But I think mainly this will be it. I think while both is crazy and lowers the strength of humans significantly at tier 3. It doesn't need the curse, because what it does is, like, this is both more or less, no, not more or less, curse is like 30% damage mitigation, right? Like one third, cripple is more than 50% damage mitigation, so cripple is obviously stronger. But do you really need to go for cripple if you can go for curse, which doesn't need the two upgrades? 
And you, in this matchup, you want anti-magic anyway. And possession is still a lot better because you get a unit uh, than Cripple is. I don't think Curse needs this. Curse is sick. Curse is so good. Banshees in general are crazy good. If you do this, Curse, and I think this might be the case in general, but I'm not 100% sure. Curse must be more expensive. But then you have an issue once again that you can't really use the under tier 1 spells. So I, I think I just wouldn't do this. And maybe make Curse a bit more expensive. But make Cripple a tiny bit more affordable and give it to Cripple. It doesn't make any sense lore-wise, right? But we ignore this. And I think it's okay that we ignore this. Then we come to one of my favorite changes in this. I've been screaming about this issue for a long, 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 long time. Heal Scrolls removed from the Tome of Relics. Hell yeah! It is long overdue. The only reason why Scroll of Healing wasn't an undead shop was that we had no healing in the shop at all. And then we got this with the Ritual Dagger, and Scroll of Healing made it so you don't have to contest for shops anymore. And that sucks! If you don't have to contest for shops, it takes out an incentive for you to go out on the map, which is way less risky. How many times have we seen this on Echo Isle in Happy vs. Whatever Night Elf, with that mass air, that the Night Elf is trying so hard and is doing whatever he can and try to be as secure as possible to somehow get to a shop for these heal scrolls that he absolutely needs, that both sides need, and the undead. No, puts his feet up. Oh, yeah, these seal scrolls. I heard about them. That might be a good idea. Oh, uh, yeah, I just grabbed them from my shop without any risk. That was always the issue with freaking heal scrolls. So! And that shop is a little bit boring because we don't get anything cool on tier 3 except the orb. Um, but this change is by far one of the best changes in a long time. And I think this is a huge buff to Night Elf Mass Air. Which is kinda good! Because it was super fun! It was oftentimes a hundred supply fights, which are crazy! With lots of AoE and things flashing everywhere, that was super fun! Very good this is gone. Very, 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 very good. Whatever you do, whatever you hear, Blizzard, if you, if you keep one thing in, this change is superb. But still love to see something cool on tier 3, but maybe uh, we do get a new item, that is the Wand of Negation. Undead has a problem. And that problem is no dispel until tier 3 plus an upgrade and then you have to morph morph by far the latest dispel of any race which is cool which is okay because we want asymmetric factions because symmetric factions are boring as hell so, people are already foreseeing the future with the Wand of Negation. And I'm pretty sure less than a handful of people actually know what this does. What kind of dispel is it? How many charges? Is it even a charged item? How much damage does it do? 200 gold. Three charges, AoE dispel, 200 damage per summon. My biggest question here is, should this item be single target dispel or AoE dispel? I haven't made up my mind yet. I think this is so good. This opens up 
a lot of variety for undead because we are not that dependent on destroyers anymore. For the for the sake of the game, having some sort of this spell available earlier than tier 3 plus upgrade plus morph is healthy. Really healthy. I'm not sure if the implementation is the correct one. Of course, as always, the, the Night Elves are crying the loudest and it's really annoying to get tagged by the Night Elves in the chat right now. So, don't. Crazy overestimation that this item will just dominate the game. I think it's a cool crutch. 200 gold. This is 200 gold. That is a lot. That is more than a health potion. There's more than a mana potion. There's more than a rod. That's a lot. You only get this item if you really need it. And then of course it's good. It should be good. There is a lot of questions about this item now. How many charges should it have? How expensive should it be? Should it be AoE or single target? And if it's only single target, how much damage should it do to summons? And I don't have the answers to this yet. I was exposed to this item and the implementation that we have here 15 minutes ago or so. I don't know. But I guess we have time to make up our mind and figure something out. Because the idea is great. It's very great. Meat wagon speed increased to 240. Now that begs the question for me. How much is a mortar team? Movement speed wise. 270. A demolisher is 220 and a glaive thrower, is it the same? Is also 220. So meat wagons are really annoying. All siege units outside of mortar teams are really annoying because they are so slow. Undead aura was dialed back quite a while ago, giving them a little more is definitely nice. Um, it is not the same speed as an obsidian statue. It is slower. So it will still trail behind. But it will definitely be a help. For sure. Does this... Do a lot of... Do, does, does this do a lot of harm? I don't think so. Uh, others might correct me, but I don't think so. Frost Room Freezing Breath is, of course, like, that's a meme update. Like, 50 mana. It's still relatively useless. Worms itself. I don't know. I would like to see something else for Frost Room Freezing Breath. Uh, freezing a building for this much uh, of, of resources. Like, first getting to worms, being able to afford a worm, and then... Also, the upgrade, which takes a long time. I don't think this does anything. Um, I'd be very, very, very surprised. Maybe give the Frostworm, with that upgrade, more of the slow time back. Back then, the slow time for a worm on heroes, etc. was crazy. But with an upgrade, maybe give something back. I don't know. Frostworm definitely underplayed. And again... They realize that this is underplayed, that this is underplayed, that this bill is an issue, that this is a dumb mechanic, and that cripple is, or necros in general, are underplayed. I don't really get why curse. But yeah, and this is also not done. Uh, so, what do we say? Not enough, unnecessary, kinda interesting, very good. 
very good, but we have to discuss the implementation. Um, doesn't do any harm, I think. And useless. Neutral. Fire Lord Volcano does less damage to buildings. I think it's very cool, very good. It's fun in the fights. It is very disruptive whenever you get it in one-on-one. -on -one. It's crazy in FFA. Tornado, I have to see, man. This, like a super speed tornado, could be fun. Could be fun. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my initial feedback. Is there... Like, this is my feedback to what they posted. So, is there anything missing that I would like to see implemented? For sure. We will probably have bigger discussions about this. Uh, when Dondo is available, I know a community patch by him and Save Orcas is in the works and got some progress. And also, when I saw other reactions. But I think. Arcane Tower mana burn is too strong still. I feel like human expansion in general has a tiny bit of an easy time. Um, and human tier 3 might still be too strong and they want to buff it further with Polymorph. Orc. I feel like I would like to see a tiny nerf to Serpent Wards. Just one or two damage, maybe? This Torrent thing is crazy. And this will obviously change everything. So, when Torrent are getting implemented on Tier 2, we can throw all our observations about what's currently going on out the window. Obviously. So... I don't have any strong feelings on Orc that needs to be addressed, I think. Night Elf! Um, yeah, that part of change is to me rather useless, unfortunately. Do I think... I'm having a hard time. I always say, or said in the past, that I think the game design for Night Elf is in a very, very good spot. And the, most of the units, if not all of the units, have a certain purpose. The race design in general, like how things are intertwined, how they interact with each other is really cool. So... Arguably, though, uh, so what I said is that the best nerf to Night Elf would be nerfs to other races. Especially with Ghoul Frenzy. We all know, yada yada. Um, I know that they are struggling at the moment, and I know that they need some help in other regards. I still think the interaction of Orb of Venom, that the fact that it stacks is dumb. But you can't take that away in the current implementation of Night Elf, because then they are by far the weakest. Um, that's a bit of an issue. I could see some, some very tiny buffs to bears. But I'm also having a hard time. As I said, like I wouldn't touch that too much. I don't know if there's uh, problems in playability. I still feel like we have to do something with the Warden. Because the Warden is one of the funnest heroes. If mixed in well. But we don't see her ever. So the Warden needs to be addressed on top of all this, I think. Undead. Pretty sure I said everything. You could argue a tiny damage nerf to Garks. But then you also address them with the scroll of healing removed already. So do you want more of that? I don't think so. Um, Frenzy doesn't go far enough for sure. And then rest is I guess kind of fine. I would like to see as much as it pains me. Late game cleave of the pit lord addressed. That's just sick. I would also like to see... 
um, mini buffs to soul burn because I think in general it's a very interesting spell. Is there more? Just off the top of my head. I think defend could potentially deserve a nerf, but not with all the other stuff involved as well. So yeah, that's just off the top of my head. We will think about this a lot more. There's going to be way more videos. Um, but yeah, this is my current in very initial thoughts.